As you guys have just seen, I'll be attempting in today's Pokemon Challenge video, can I beat Pokemon Sword using Go's anime Pokemon team? If you guys don't know, in the Pokemon Journeys anime, the most recent one that's come out, Go is a new character alongside Ash and has a goal of catching a bunch of Pokemon, if not all of them. So because of that, he's got lots to choose from, but I'm going to restrict myself to the six that he's used the most frequently, with that being his Inteleon, his Cinderace, his Grookey, his Raichu, his Flygon, and Excisor. Also, with this challenge not being a Nuzlocke, there's not going to be any rules with no items in battle, no set mode, nothing like that. Obviously, I don't want to overpower my Pokemon, making them like significantly overleveled with when it comes to the gym leaders and Leon eventually at the end. So I'll be restricting and like, you know, keeping tabs essentially of what my levels are. But either way, guys, we know the rules, we know the challenge, we know what I'll be doing. Let's get on with the video. Can I beat Pokemon Sword playing as Go? And with that, obviously, we have to begin with naming our character Go. So that's the first part done. Great, challenge begun. And obviously, as we know with the starters, Grookey, Scorebunny, and Sobble, Go does eventually end up with all three of them. But his first one is Scorebunny. So I'm going to stick with the routine and get the Scorebunny under the wrap. And then go on Pokemon Home and transfer all the other Pokemon across to this game, with that being my Scyther, my Sobble, my Grookey, my Pikachu, because I don't want to start with a Pichu with the whole happiness thing, and then my um, Trapinch, who obviously it will end up evolving into a Flygon. Here we end up battling Hop. I don't want to keep on showing all the battles with Hop because he's a nothing rival and provides no threat to me at all and is just a really poor version of Go as a character in the game. Never mind that though. <laughs> we'll be moving on to our first gym battle against Milo, the grass type gym leader. And at this point, I've already done all the Pokemon Home stuff, so you guys don't have to worry about a single thing. All the Pokemon are now in, there's no worrying about catching, and all we have to do is defeat this Grass-type farming bastard. Because of that, we start off with a Flame Charge, which takes out Milo's first Pokemon in Gossifleur, and also obviously boosting our speed, which comes in really handy against his next Pokemon, Eldegoss. We both go in into a Dynamax, because obviously I want to get this over and done with, using Max Flare. And he obviously would want to use Max Overgrowth or Max Strike or Max Guard, anything. But it's not going to work because at the end of the day, as long as you have a Fire type or a Flying type, the first gym is incredibly easy because there are no real moves that provide like any damage to you or your Pokemon. But as I said, we'll be starting off with a Max Flare with Raboot. And unfortunately for me, it doesn't actually take him down in the first attack, letting him use his Max Overgrowth. And I just find Max Overgrowth so annoying, even though it doesn't do much damage, still manages to heal the Pokemon a little bit. But Max Flare was going to take out the Elder Goss no matter what. And with that, our first gym is now completed, meaning in Go. Sorry, not me, but Go has now officially completed the first gym and has done the first part in this Pokemon challenge. Next up, we'll have our second gym battle against Nessa, the water type uh, gym leader. And as we know, Go having a Grookey and a Pikachu will uh, have a type advantage against Nessa as well. However, I did not mention this earlier, but I have stuck to using this in all the battles. In one, for each gym leader, when a Pokemon faints in the battle, you cannot use healing items to heal that Pokemon. That's the only rules I've set. But besides that, we carry on. Pikachu using a Spark Attack doesn't take down the Goldeen, but does significant damage. But unfortunately for me, I take a, a Horn Attack with it being a critical hit. But with me having way better speed, Electro Ball takes down the Goldeen, and that's the first Pokemon over and done with for Nessa. Next up, she sends an Aracuda, and obviously Aracuda knows Aqua Jet, allowing it to hit first, but I was hoping that I could tank that first hit and then respond with either an Electro Ball or a Spark, which I do manage to get done using Electro Ball, doing great amount of damage, but not being able to take out the Aracuda, but Quick Attack allows me to land first before Aqua Jet or any other move, and done. Arukuda, the second Pokemon, is taken out, with us also, luckily enough, getting a critical hit as well. Not like it probably mattered. 
Next up comes uh, Nessa's strongest Pokemon, the Dreadnought. That's why I swapped out into Grookey, because Grookey being a grass type has an even greater type advantage against Dreadnought, which is a water rock type. So I decided to uh, Dynamax and then eventually use Max Overgrowth, which obviously is just going to take out the Pokemon. But I have to say, in fairness, to Nessa's um, Dreadnought, which I, I think stupid though, like at the beginning of the game is Dynamax, whereas at the end, as we later know, is eventually Gigantamax. I feel like just Gigantamax it, you know, we're ready. But Max Overgrowth hits the Pokemon, but Dreadnought does hold on with really, really low HP and managing to get a Max Strike off. And the reason Max Strike really annoyed me is it would eventually lower the speed of my Grookey, allowing it to get a Max Darkness off. And I did get a little worried for a second, but Grookey did manage to hold on, using its um, final move of Max Overgrowth to take down the Dreadnought, as it, there was no chance of it surviving this. Meaning now Goa has now not only beaten Milo, but has also beaten Nessa. So now we've got two Gym Badges under Goa's belt. He's showing his a real, a real battle. But next up, we do have Kabu, a fire type gym leader. And with Go's team, there being a ground type and trap in, so water type and Drizzile, then eventually Inteleon, obviously. But for now, Drizzile. I did feel confident going into this battle with Go's team. So Kabu, obviously, as we know, fire type starts off with a Nine Tails. And I did think, oh, what if it starts off with a Will-O-Wisp or anything like that? Should I start off with Drizzile? But I wanted to save Drizzile for as much HP as it could possibly have for the final battle against the Gigantamax Center Scorch. So I start off with Trap Inch, but obviously Nine Tails is going to be quicker and manages to get off a Will-O-Wisp, burning my Trap Inch. But luckily enough, I use Bulldoze, which not only does a significant amount of damage, but also reduces Nine Tails speed. But even if we do reduce Ninetales speed, it's going to be quicker than us, landing a fire spin, putting us in a vortex. But once again, we use Bulldoze, lowering its speed, and then he uses an Ember attack. Doesn't take down the Trap Inch, and one more Bulldoze, boom. Ninetales is out of the match and unable to battle. And even though I could have swapped into Drizzle at this moment, I was hoping that I'd be able to possibly land a uh, Bulldoze, but Arcanine's ability, also I have to mention, did become Null and Void thanks to Trap Inch's Hyper Cutter, but it didn't matter. Flame Wheel got off and took us out. And the reason I sent Pikachu out instead of a Drizzle is, as I said earlier, I wanted to save Drizzle's HP as much as possible for the battle against Center Scorch. But also, I was hoping that I could use um, Pikachu's ability of Static coming in with him using a Flame Wheel to make it paralyzed. And that was what I was going for, and it went out perfectly. But Pikachu did get burned and had really low HP and at this point I just thought I could just get an Electro Ball off, get as much damage as I possibly can before Arcanine eventually takes out my Pikachu, which it does a very good amount of damage. Both Pikachu and Trapinch managed to affect Arcanine for me to then just go out, send Drizzile and then just use Water Ple Pulse, sorry, I thought I said Pledge, but Water Pulse take out the Arcanine, which obviously super effective, water type versus fire type. He throws the center scorch out and we both know what we're gonna do. I Dynamax using Drizzile and he obviously Gigantamaxes using his center scorch. Uh, the only reason I was worried was because center scorch being both fire and bug type, I just didn't know if I was gonna be able to just one shot the Pokemon. And also me not being around the same level as its center scorch, I knew there wasn't gonna be a massive difference in power. So, I do start off with though, obviously, what else am I going to use? A Max Geyser, hoping that I could one-shot it, but, well, let me just say, Max Geyser wasn't able to one-shot the Center Scorch like I expected, even though I hoped. But, all I wanted to do was l survive whatever attack came next, which was going to end up being a Max Flutterby. Thank God it wasn't the G-Max move, even though it's a fire type, I had a feeling that it would have done more damage. Uh, just because it is a G-Max moves and those moves are relatively broken. But at this point, it was over and done with. Max Geyser lands, Center Scourge is unable to battle, and now Go has not only beaten Milo and Nessa, but has now beaten Kabu too. Or should I say three? Because that is the third gym badge given to me and Go and Go's team. Brilliant. Kabu down. 
Up next we have B. And with B being a fighting type, luckily enough for me, or should I say for Go, um, we do have Scyther, and Scyther being a bug flying type, I had a feeling I was going to be able to breeze through this gym. She starts off with a hit on top, and obviously I throw out my Scyther. She uses a quick attack, but it actually did a bit more damage than I expected in fairness, but wing attack was obviously just going to one-shot the hit on top, and that was the first Pokemon done, but I decided to send in Raboot. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to save Scyther for the battle against her Gigantamax Machamp, and also Raboot could use Double Kick, which I knew would be effective against Pangoro, because Pangoro is also a Dark type as well, as a Fighting type. He manages to use a Work Up, boosting his attack and Special Attack, but I managed to get another Double Kick off, and it came really close to knocking it out, but it doesn't, allowing him to use Night Slash, but thank god it didn't take out Rabu, and I was able to use Flame Charge to not only boost my speed, land a crit critical hit, but also take out the Pangoro. So that's another Mon down. She ends up going in with the Surfetched. I used Flame Charge, knowing I wasn't going to be able to take it down, but unfortunately for me, um, Surfetched uses Revenge, and that's it for Rabu. Either way though, I do send Drizzle, knowing that I could just use Water Pledge, and then hopefully tank the revenge, which I just about do by the way, just. Water Pulse comes in next, and that's it for Sir Fetched and B. She throws out her Machamp, so I go in and Dynamax my Scyther, hoping to get Max Airstream out and take it down immediately. Like, genuinely one shot, because I know this Machamp can use a Max Flare if I recall. Um, I didn't check its mood set, but I if I remember, it, no it should know how to use Max Flare. Either way, we go into it straight away with a Max Airstream, doing a good amount of damage, but not taking it out. All we have to do is survive one hit and the battle will be over. That seems to be a theme when it comes to my Dynamaxes so far. B uses Max Darkness but it doesn't do any real substantial damage to my Scyther, and at this point the battle was over and done with. Max Airstream lands, Gigantamax Machamp is dead, well let's say fainted to be a bit nicer, and is over and done with, that's four badges for go, and this is just being really easy, we've got good Pokemon, good variety, making it a lot easier for this gym challenge. But this is where my words kind of come back to bite me, and that's against Opal. As you guys know, Opal's a fairy type gym leader, and this would be a lot easier if my Scyther was a Scizor, but at this point it wasn't a Scizor, and I throw out my Cinderace against the Weezing. I use Pyro Ball, hoping with it just being such a strong, to like, strong move, I could just one-shot it, but it doesn't do the damage, and, and this is just... Ah, just annoying. Sludge lands, not only being a critical hit, but also poisons my Cinderace. Either way, a flame charge taking Weezing out of the battle, making it a, um, next up a Togekiss. I was hoping with it obviously being a flying type as well as a fairy, I'd use Pikachu's Thunderbolt and then it take it out. But, Draining Kiss completely ruined it, and when I saw the first Draining Kiss, I just knew there was no point in me doing anything, I'll just, I'm about to lose Pikachu, all I can hope for is a static coming in and then eventually paralyzing it, which did on the second Draining Kiss, even though it took out the Pikachu and restored its health, static came in, paralyzing the Togekiss, allowing Inteleon to get a snipe shot off, not taking it out, but meaning I was going to be quicker. So when Togekiss does use Air Slash, it doesn't have a chance to flinch my Inteleon, which it doesn't. The second snipe shot lands, and boom, that's over and done with for the Togekiss. Next up, I send my Cinderace out there because Morwiles obviously steal as well as Fire uh, Fairy type, so Pyro Ball was gonna one shot it. After that, I did have a long, long, long battle against this Gigama Gigantamax Alcream. Pi, that's my nickname for it, yes. Uh, but Alcremi with Scyther. But it was just no, nothing being done. None of us were doing any damage to one another. Scyther's Max Flutterbees and Max Airstreams did no damage, as well as Alcremi's Gigantamax moves. But at this point, as the Dynamax and Gigantamax had ended, and we were just in our normal battles, she confused me, and then we had slowly chipped away at me to the point of Scyther going down. And that was it for the Scyther. But my Scyther did manage to bring Alcream to a very low HP, allowing Inteleon to get off its snipe shot. 
and boom that's over and done with opal is done that is the fifth gym over done completed thank you i'll take the next gym badge next up we have gordy and luckily enough for me i have inteleon fully evolved strong water type and grookey yes it's a in its first evolution stage but know some really strong grass type moves as you're about to go see here right now obviously gordy starts off with a barbarical being a water rock type i knew i had to start off with grookey grookey knowing wood hammer one shots the barbarical brilliant and it might have come in because of the critical hit being a one shot but either way i wasn't going to complain i was going to take that and next up use vibrava vibrava had a long earth power battle against shuckle that eventually goes into a win and next up stone journey uh, sets up a wonder room i figured i could use earth power and it being super effective would take it out but obviously with defenses being swapped stone journey now had a stronger defense use a stealth rock which was going to impact the pokemon that came in next but i managed to land another earth power bringing its hp really low he uses a body slam but my braver manages to hold on and me being quicker than it obviously meant that the stone journey was going to go down to my final earth power gordy sends out his ace his Gigantamax Colossal, but it doesn't matter. My Dynamax Inteleon did a one shot with its Max Geyser, and that was over with that next gym. It probably being, if the easiest gym since the first one, like Milo, because I, it was just a breeze. It generally was. Having Inteleon makes it so much easier for this gym, if not Pokemon Sword, the game itself. Next up is Piers, and as we know, Piers doesn't Dynamax, Gigantamax, none of that. It's not a fan, clearly. He begins with Scrafty, and I throw out my Flygon. Even though I know uh, Scrafty's um, got a fighting type moves and Flygon's part ground type, I was just hoping Earthquake, being such a strong move, can get me off to a great start. And I wanted to be able to save my Cinderace, obviously knowing Double Kick, a fighting type move, against its Obstagoon later on in the battle it comes close with him landing a couple brick breaks and paybacks but flygon's earthquake and dragon claw puts it away next up it comes a malamar uses foul play and my souther is immediately out of the battle and at this point i was really frustrated so i throw out my inteleon using snipe shot i do a good amount of damage to the malamar but he manages to use a payback and at this point i was getting worried he was going to take out my inteleon but he holds on strong, even with it being a critical hit. We get one more snipe shot, obviously being the quicker Pokemon with Inteleon having crazy speed stats, taking out the Malamar, and that's two down. Next up is Obstagoon. Obviously, I throw out my Cinderace like the plan was, and I land two double kicks. He goes in for a throat chop, and it does a good amount of damage on my Cinderace, but me being so much quicker, I managed to use my double kick one more time, and that was it for the Obstagoon. And with him having one more Pokemon Piers, it being a Stunky, part poison type, I throw out Flygon even though it was low HP. It does, does use a Sucker Punch, which almost took him out, but the Earthquake does hit either way, taking it out, and meaning this gym battle was over, done with, and now let's add the seventh gym to Go's arsenal. But this is where it gets a bit scary. Raihan, obviously double battle specialist, and uh, just... I don't get, uh, how do I say it, they call him the Tamer of Dragons, but he has a Gigalith, like, that's not the Tamer of Dragons, by the way, but either way, we'll carry on, I do start off with Inteleon and Flygon, and he starts off with Flygon and Gigalith, at this point, I just knew I could use a Snipe Shot and take that Gigalith out quick, but the Flygon on the opposite side does worry me, so as I said, I use Snipe Shot, do a good amount of damage, but Gigalith does hold on, his Flygon then uses Breaking Swipe, which obviously... Uh, does attack both Pokemon, but not only that, lowers our attack. Really unnecessary, but hey. We do land a Dragon Claw on that opposite Flygon, damaging it heavily, and he uses Stealth Rock with his Gigalith, meaning that the next Pokemon that come into this battle are going to be heavily damaged when they come in. Either way, we put Gigalith away with a Snipe Shot, but the opposing Flygon does land a Thunder Punch on my Inteleon, but Inteleon does hold firm, and we land one more Dragon Claw, taking out that Flygon, meaning Raihan is now only left with his Duraludon and his Sandaconda. And with that, I did feel confident with the Ground-type moves being effective against Duraludon, and Water-type moves being effective against Sandaconda. Either way, I do use San uh, Snipe Shot on the Sandaconda, but... <sighs> 
even though it's great news that we do manage to take out the Sandaconda in one hit, Dureladon does use his G-Max move, Depletion, and take out my Flygon in one hit. But I do remember Dureladon obviously being part Steel type as well. I immediately Dynamax my Cinderace when I have the chance, and then plan on using Max Flare as combined with Snipe Shot to take out the Dureladon. After all, uh, it shouldn't be able to handle two Pokemon, should it? Nope, it does. Max Flare doesn't take out the Duraludon and he holds on strong. And next up, with me using Snipe Shot, I just wasn't able to do much damage. I just couldn't take it out. Duraludon holds on one more time using Max Rockfall. On my Cinderace, obviously. And it did come close to taking it out, really close. And at this point, I was thinking, all I gotta do is land that Max Flare, over and done with. And that was it, the 8th gym completed. I managed to beat Raihan, and Go manages to beat all the gym leaders. Great start. Great, great, great start. But, I do understand this is a challenge of can I beat Pokemon Sword. And in Pokemon Sword you have the Champion Cup, where you're up against Marnie, B, Hop, Nessa, uh, Bead, B... Uh, Raihan, all of them. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But, um, I'll be honest, I'm just gonna speed right through and just show you all of the, like, just the final battles against them, because in all honesty, they don't matter. We all know I beat them. All that matters is the eight gym leaders and Leon. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys right now, as you guys can see on screen, just me using all my Pokemon, defeating their Pokemon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it really, genuinely, like all of them just were like one shots, um, one Pokemon taking down each of their aces. It really was a, like super easy and like, it just made me forget how easy it actually was against them in the Champion Cup. And here's it is, the final one against Raihan, Flygon using Max Quake. And I have to say, Flygon was an absolute beast throughout this whole um, Pokemon Sword challenge with Go. But here it is. This is the battle that matters. This is what the, all I wanted to do. All we need to know, can Go beat Pokemon Sword? And the only way he can do that is, can Go beat Leon? <sighs> Let's begin. As you guys know, Leon does start off with an Aegislash. And knowing that, I throw out my Flygon. You see, I assumed the first move I could just use Dragon Dance and he would attempt King Shield. But I was wrong. Even though I do get off the Dragon Dance, he goes into changing his stance form into attack mode, essentially. And uses Flash Cannon. And as you guys don't know, Flash Cannon does a good amount of damage against Flygon. And at this point, I thought, this time he'll use King Shield, I use Dragon Dance again. No! <laughs> Even though my Dragon Dance is coming really good, you know, boosting attack and speed, he doesn't use King Shield. But I, knew, I just figured he wasn't going to use King Shield, and I can use Crunch. And the good news for me is at this point, even though Flygon has lost so much HP, Dragon Dance has boosted its attack and speed by 2. Next up comes Mr. Mime's younger brother, Mr. Rhyme. And with that, I use Earthquake taking out the Ice type with it being a critical hit, one-shotting it again. That's two Pokemon that Flygon has one-shotted, by the way. And let, let me tell you this, Flygon kills Leon's team. Next up, Haxorus. Dragon type, great. So I use Dragon Claw. And again, Dragon Dance from earlier, boosted my attack so much, bang, over and done with, one shot. Next up, Dragapult, as you guys don't know, Dragon type as well, as a ghost type. So I use Dragon Claw, what happens? Dead, one shot. <laughs> and at this point I was like, am I just gonna one shot everything with Flygon? Like, what? Next up, Inteleon, again, Dragon Claw, one shot. And at this point I was like, well, this is easy, like, is this all you got, Leon? He throws his Charizard out. And I return Flygon and throw out my Raichu. I knew a Charizard being a Fire Flying, I could just use a Thunder Electric type move like a Thunderbolt, Max Lightning, anything, and it should be over. I know some people would probably recommend using Inteleon, using Max Geyser, but with him knowing Max Overgrowth, I just couldn't take that risk. So I decided to use Raichu. 
and then just use my Max Lightning. He Gigantamaxes his Charizard, obviously, but at this point, I haven't lost a single Pokemon. Flygon has one-shotted all of his Pokemon, and I've got everyone fully healed, and it was kind of over and done with. Go is essentially beaten Leon, like, incredibly easily. I think this was weirdly easier using Go's team than it was when I did my first playthrough, like, with this game with my actual team. Like, I actually struggled a bit more than now. Like, I just flew by. He uses Max Rockfall, and I completely forgot about that. But it actually does no damage, like, any substantial damage to the Raichu. And with that, I knew this was going to be my battle. I have won. So I use Max Lightning, and it does so, so much damage. And all I had to do is use one more. But Leon's a little bitch, so he uses a full restore. But we're just going to ignore that. We'll ignore that. Let's just ignore that. We use one more Max Lightning, again doing a crazy amount of damage. And I figured the Sandstorm would take it out, but it didn't. He uses one more move in his Gigantamax mood. And uses max overgrowth even though it does a good amount of damage the battle was over i use max lightning with my raichu or should i say goes raichu and that is all it wrote charizard or should i say gigantamax charizard has been beaten and that was it go has now officially beaten leon in the champion cup all the other trainers, Marnie, Beads, Hop, all the gym leaders, all of them making him the champion of the region. Go has now completed the game, and now I've proven it. I can beat Pokemon Sword playing as Go. If you guys enjoyed this video, please, oh please, oh please, like and subscribe. Comment down anything you thought about the video also also what i'd recommend as well is comment down any other players that you'd like me to do this kind of game like kind of challenge through would you like me to do a can you beat pokemon sword playing as leon can you beat pokemon sword playing as hop can you beat pokemon sword playing as even ash can you beat pokemon sword playing as other champions from different regions obviously you have to take into account can i actually use their teams you know like remember there aren't every pokemon in the pokemon sword and shield decks so you have to take that into account but comment down any other trainer you think i should use in the pokemon sword can i beat pokemon sword playing as that trainer either way you guys i really enjoyed this challenge it was so much fun being able to just blast through the game with my already set team and just how do i say this just work my way through the game and i really enjoyed it I did prove that I can beat Pokemon Sword playing as Go. I hope you guys enjoy. Take care, you guys. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day.